is a short practice to begin your day with. Bring your hands behind you and legs in front and bring your attention to the inside of the ankle joint. And from that inner place in your ankles, start to rotate in one direction. And a few times in the other direction. And then as you straighten your legs in front of you, engage your toes and make arches of your feet and draw the toes backwards and as you do that you will feel the stretch happening in the feet, backs of the ankles, shins, knees, thighs and let it travel all the way up your back, neck, back of your head and crown of your head. You can imagine that you are wearing a sheath over your back body. And fascia is actually like a sheath underneath our skin that you can feel being moved, stretched, lubricated. And if you are sensitive enough, you can find places in the back body that are maybe a little bit more stiff and more tense. And then you can make small movements there. Take an exhale every now and then through your mouth. And as you come up, take a deep inhale. Exhale, ground your bones. And then let your left leg open. And as it opens, the pelvis is going to start to rotate and stay back with your right leg. Take it maybe even a little bit further back so that you can feel the stretch happening on the inner thigh. And then to this, you can add a slight rotation of the spine. Again, going underneath your skin, you can feel from the left hip across your back to the right shoulder. As you slowly come back, the hips come parallel and then again you're going to asymmetrically by bending now the right leg, lengthening the left inner thigh and then adding a little bit of spinal rotation. This should all feel very pleasant, very juicy and smooth, no forcing. And then you can slowly come back. Now take a look. This is how you're going to be holding your feet when you are with your feet over your head. So lie down, bring your legs over your head. And then hold your feet in this way from above. And take the legs a little bit higher up but only to an extent that it feels very comfortable and that you can stay here for a bit. Now my hand and my foot are making a resistance to one another. So this helps me stay lighter and not be heavy on my vertebrae. Then I can start to stretch one leg and the other a few times. Or if you prefer, you can go with both legs up, both knees straight, and again stretching the back body. From there, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor. You're going to support yourself with your hands. The heels and the sitting bones are going to be close to each other, if not even connected with one another. And then, don't lead with the knees, but rather lead with the hips. 
into a forward body stretch. So don't go too far where you would feel too much tension in the knees. Rather, it is this area that we want to address. And then come back. Again, lengthen your legs forward. Just like we did before, you're going to bend one leg, go to the side, this time though, come all the way to your left side, the right side is on top, and place your feet on top of each other and your hands on top of one another. Now, instead of pulling with your leg down and arm up, you're going to try to make space between the right side of the pelvis and the right side of the rib cage. Then, once you have that, you can add the leg and the arm. But they are not being pulled out of the torso. And slowly release. Now you can bring your right leg you can bend both knees, but bring your right leg towards your right armpit as you slowly roll to the other side. The left leg follows, and there you go. On the right side, and the left leg is on top of the right. So now, the left side of the rib cage and the left side of the pelvis are going to make some space. And then you can add the arm. So without pulling the arm or leg, pulling the torso with arm and leg, you're actually going to retract arm and leg into the torso, but try to make space in the torso itself. And then release, let your Knees bend, your left knee coming towards your chest and you're coming to the first side but now with your whole body and here you can rest for a moment. Inhale and exhale, give the weight of your body to the ground, relaxing all the muscles, the bones. And then you can turn to your back again. At this time, place your feet on the floor. Bring your arms to a comfortable place. And start to rock the pelvis anteriorly and posteriorly, forward and backwards. It will feel like a massage that you are doing on the sacrum. And now, as you continue to move in this way, you're going to also be lifting the pelvis a little bit. When you go into a posterior tilt, let the pelvis lift. And while doing that, consider including your head in the movement. Consider the connection between the tail and the head. So now we are bringing motion and fluidity into the spine and perhaps next time that you lift up you can also include the head and let the head also lift up. The head lifts as a result of the tail action. And the next time the head lifts, you can hold and see how easy it is to hold here with no particular effort.
when the head and the tail are working together. So play with it for a little while until you can really feel the connection. And then the next time you lift, you can add the arms and maybe even rock yourself side to side by pressing the left foot reaching with left arm, right foot reaching with the right arm. And then release, rest. And roll to your side, come to all fours. So here again we are exploring the full length of the spine, Make find a comfortable position. Relax the spine, relax the abdominal organs. Feel the inner fluidity of the spine. And then begin the movement of the tail that is going to get carried through the spine all the way to the head. You're focusing on easy fluid motion. slowly complete. Bring your feet together, knees apart. Reach back with your sitting bones, let your knees be open. And then find the right place for your hands where you will comfortably be able to descend and place the head. Do a little roll so a little bit more weight comes to the head and then goes back to the hands. You find the shoulder blades and from the rib cage you press into the earth to lift up and to go back down bending the elbows bringing the head down roll to the top and go back find the torso the shoulder blades press lift up and come down the next time you lift up, we're going to look side to side. So roll, come back, press, and then lift up, then go to the side, leading with your gaze. Back to center and down. So go again, the same thing, or see if you feel more comfortable with your toes pointed and not flexed. So going to the crown, and then lift up, and then curiously look from side to side, and back down. Rolling, going back, up. once or two times and back down.
Good, then bring your elbows to the floor, slide your legs back and come to Sphinx Pose. Stay here for a few breaths. And then release your whole torso down on the floor. Rest. And now we go back again. This time, sit on your heels and you're going to make a small vibration that will relax the abdominal region. All of your abdominal organs and pelvic organs can let go of the tension while you vibrate like this. You can also add the sound. Uh, to let it penetrate more inside. And then come on up into a forward fold, bent knees, feet open, relaxing the spine, upside down, relaxing the head. Shaking a little bit up. And then coming up, arms over your head, inhale, exhale, bring your hands to your heart. And then again, spinal motion, starting from the tail, going with the tail forward and then let it, let the wave carry the whole spine, including the head. If you can, let the movement be all the more inner, inner spine. Fluid and free. And then pause and feel how your spine is connected to the legs, connected to the earth. Okay, one more wave in the other direction. So you're going forward and then back. Again, imagining that the whole body is your spine and head. Again, relax into the comfort and stability provided by your connection with gravity. Head, spine, 
limbs, earth. And then you are ready for the rest of your day.